All right, what's up, everybody? This is Alex from X Trades. Welcome back to another weekly trade ideas list. I hope everybody had a wonderful trading week last week. It was a shortened week. It's actually pretty slow, but overall, really good week in the market. Closed very bullish. And overall, despite the lack of activity, it was able to rally pretty well. If you tuned in last week, we had a list of three, which really didn't do much, to be honest. We only had one that kind of played out, and that was DVN. DVN did kind of have a run up up into Monday and Tuesday. And then by Wednesday, it did double top and ended up coming down. We also had TGT on watch, which we're looking at calls on that. That did not trigger my signal on trading view. And honestly, it still looks pretty good to maybe break out. Definitely keep it on watch and carry it over into the next week. I feel like there's still some potential there. And overall, there is a kind of a one week or one month inverse head and shoulders forming. It's just not confirmed yet. We also had cat on watch as well. That ended up actually touching the neckline on Monday, but rejecting it very aggressively. So we did not get a signal on that just yet. So cat and TGT both. If you want to carry those over into next week, there is still potential there, but you want to wait for those signals that I put out that we covered last week. So set your alerts on trading view that we set last week again, if you have to, and just kind of wait. So really only DVN played out unfortunately. But we did get some good trades in last week, actually. So we have a nice little streak going here. So on Monday, we took these SPY 542 calls for a little scalp, made 25% on that or 24%. Also, A, B, and B 150 calls that were down just a little bit last week. I showed you this trade was open last Sunday. We ended up closing those out for 25% as well. And then I think on the half day Wednesdays, when we took these QQQ call scalps on zero days, and they were moving crazy because it was a shortened day. So the theta was just moving so fast. And honestly, that makes the contracts move faster as well. And they can pay faster as well, given the half day. It's basically like you took a zero day towards the last half of the day on a normal trading day. So we kind of had to get out, take the profit, you know, within five, 10 minutes. And we did that, made 16% on this one and 25% on this one. And then for new trades, I only opened one last week for a swing trade. And that was WBA. And that's 12 and a half calls. And you can see this little check mark right here on our X Trades app. This is actually a machine learning alert. So it says our machine learning filter estimates alerts like this to have a 67.54 chance of being winners. So on our X-Trades app, sometimes you will get a machine learning alert, and that means your alert could have a high probability based off other people's data. It basically combines the whole platform and everybody's trades to kind of find the probabilities of other trades. So that's a cool thing about X-Trades, kind of using AI here to figure out probabilities on future trades. We had a similar alert 16 days ago on NVIDIA. So this had an 82% chance of being a winner based off our machine learning or AI. And another one right here on Oxy, this one had a 77% chance. So anything with a check mark on the X-Trades app, that means the machine learning filter is showing a higher probability for being a winner based off everybody's data collected together and similar trades in the past. And honestly, I feel like this probably have a pretty good sample size because we have so many users and so many trades coming through. I mean, we probably have thousands, tens of thousands of trades all kind of being farmed for data to give us these little alerts on the machine learning filter. So that's our trades last week. Nice little streak we got going. Hopefully we can continue it next week as well. All right, now to the economic calendar. We'll go ahead and get over it real quick. Nothing Monday, just consumer credit at 3 p.m. This usually never moves the market. Tuesday, we do have Powell actually testifying in the Senate. Definitely want to pay attention to that at 10. Wednesday, once again, Fed Chair Jerome Powell testimony to the House. So he's going to be in the Senate on Tuesday and in the House on Wednesday. So this will definitely have potential to move the market, bring mid-session volatility for day trading. Thursday, most important data of the week is going to be the CPI. We want to see that continued trend and in inflation lower. It's very simple. We want to see it below the estimates. And then on Friday, to follow up, we do have the producer side of inflation. It's going to be the PPI. We want to see the same thing. We want to see it ticking below estimates, maybe even coming in line. But honestly, I would like to see CPI. CPI below 3% at some point. That would be huge. Even if we got 2.9, if we got 3%, something like that, that would be great. And then we also have consumer sentiment at 10 on Friday. So a pretty stacked week. We got Jerome Powell Tuesday and Wednesday talking to Congress. Also have the CPI and the PPI Thursday and Friday, and also consumer sentiment at 10. And on to seasonality real quick. We'll try to breeze through this real fast. We are looking at July 8th to the 12th. Our last 20 years of data here, we have winning trades at 70% for this period with a summarized profit at 4%. Pretty bullish. Same thing with last week. 
last week was very bullish as well. And we did follow that, thank God, because seasonality lately has kind of been on and off. But we did follow it very accurately last week. And onto the 10-year data set, even more bullish, winning trades of the last 10 years at 80% with a summarized profit at 6%. So very bullish for the 10-year and 20-year. Honestly, kind of hard to imagine it going higher given the close on Friday. I mean, the indexes are just flying right now, especially the NASDAQ. NASDAQ is just breaking out very aggressively. SPY kind of still going up slowly. But overall, I mean, it's very bullish. Haven't had a rejection case handle nothing really so we really need bad data you know hawkish Jerome Powell something to bring us down and right now there's no resistance to go off of there's no type of signal giving you that will go lower so you're kind of just guessing a top if you really wanted to go short up here and that's a little bit riskier so it's sometimes just easier to wait for the little dip and go long and that's what we did all week last week buy the small choppy dips trade it to the upside scalp it do whatever or even find discounted names in the market like we found Airbnb maybe WBA is a chance and we'll go over that later but yeah, that's the seasonality looking pretty bullish. 10 year at 80%, 20 year at 70%. Both looking very bullish. Nice summarized profit on each. Looking pretty good for this week. All right, and on to our setups for the week. I'll go ahead and try to get through these as quick as possible. I ended up starting a little bit later than I wanted to because I got attacked by a cat that I was trying to get out of our yard. So I had to go to the store and get Neosporin and all this crap and it set me back an hour. So try to get through this as quick as possible. But our first one here, we're looking at SQ. Very simple breakout. Test one, test two, small test three rejection candle nothing big but now starting to break out of that probably will want that push over 65 69 which is this previous structure low and overall looks pretty good to maybe fill this little sell and balance area over here maybe get up to 70 at some point we do have a positive macd to the upside still holding our size in the mid 50s no signal here really it's not oversold not overbought kind of just in the middle we do have the 50 sma kind of in the way here probably will need to get over that eventually and to get to 70 we will need to clear that 50 sma right here you can kind of see it getting over the 200 sma as well and also the 921 ema cloud so if we zoom in here we can see we closed over the 200 sma which is these dots closed over the 921 ema combo which is this little cloud right here so sq is looking pretty good nice little breakout play maybe we'll see some follow through to the upside definitely more discounted than other names if you're not trying to chase the indexes at the top or buy into highs this could be a nice little discount kind of value play here given it's kind of near support it's starting to break out and it's not as high as everything else so that's for sq i'm looking at calls one thing you could do for risk management pretty simple if it starts going back within the downtrend or maybe breaking back under 61 something like that that is your stop out area so that's for sq looking at calls nice little breakout play hopefully we can see some follow through all right and number two we're going over moderna it's pretty simple we have a test one a test two a test three now at a test four bounce on this trend line with also previous kind of triple top resistance here now maybe acting as new support you can see it was actually a back test area right here so we back tested that and went very high so this is a multiple confluence area you got multiple rejections from you know early 2024 we have a breakout over that with a gnarly back test to a gnarly rally right here so we're now at that level looking pretty good to bounce it's a little bit more contrarian given it's kind of been in a downtrend since may but overall with trend line plays like this it's pretty simple you know you give it a shot at the trend line and if it breaks down you go ahead and stop up because if it breaks down this little 115s you probably even stretch it down to like 113 112 to be safe because you know you can break under these trend lines and then pop right back over them so if you want to give it a little bit of leeway you could even go down to 110 as a risk off area but overall if it flushes this trend line you kind of do have a straight shot down to 9711 or the structure low right here so that's for moderna i'm looking at calls on this nice little dip by area potentially one thing it might have in the way you do have the 921 combo in the way you can see rejected back here so you probably will need to get back over that max upside i can see for right now maybe the 21 ema which is going to be about you know 130 and then also the 50 sma which is currently about 133 so if you want to use the moving averages as price targets that's always a good thing to do just in case this wants to act as a lower high and then head back down so if i buy below the moving averages i usually sell once it gets into them just to make things a little bit more simple and i don't really have to worry about rejections or you know getting caught in a lower high to go lower so that's for moderna looking at calls like i said you got multi-tests 
at this resistance or old resistance turn new support back test right here and also the trend line right here all right and last but not least for individual tickers we're going over wba i actually went long this already for september i took those 12.5 calls we do have a really big gap here from their earnings they shit the bed it's kind of at a capitulation point you got a very low rsi i mean it's been in a downtrend just forever so i'm kind of looking for a dead cap bounce i mean look how long this has been selling obviously it's due for something like this like a quick like bounce like this head to you know the 200 sma or the 50 sma test it then go back down maybe it's a little bit riskier but sometimes you won't find discounts like this all the time and sometimes it's good to just try and pull the trigger start small and you know take a small amount of calls and maybe add later once it gets a little bit more strength maybe you can add once it gets inside the gap because if it starts getting inside the gap at least 50 percent of it can fill etc stuff like that so buying knives like this is a little bit riskier but if you know what you're doing and you kind of start small and don't oversize at the beginning, you can definitely add later. And, you know, if it goes lower, you can add again. If it gets strength, you can add again as well. So there's a couple of things you can do. We don't have a reversal signal yet. Like I said, just kind of going off a oversold RSI. Also a very oversold RSI on the one week. I mean, we had the one week in the 20s right now. So last time I got to the 20s, it hung out for a little bit. Had a little bounce back here and overall had a RSI reset. So maybe we can see that again. It's definitely in free fall right now. So it's a little bit riskier, but WBA, I'm looking at calls. I'm already loaded on 12.5 calls, small position for now. I may add later, but look at this overextension under the 921 cloud so eventually i feel like this is probably going to pop pretty aggressively head back up to the 921 combo maybe reject off it right there as it did right here as it did right here you can see it pops back up into it rejects pops back up into it rejects or kind of stalls out so when you get these big overextensions under the moving averages usually they'll kind of snap back for a mean regression and that's what i like about these kind of contrarian uh knife buys so that's for wba looking at calls actually already in calls for september so if you are interested in that take a smaller size be patient it may need some time to form a base maybe it'll bounce right away we'll have to see all right and on to our index analysis as we do every week so last week on spy we were really just focused on 543.60s to 543, which is our structure low that we were focused on. And you can see here, Monday, we actually ripped off of it right back here. So at about 10.15, we pulled into that structure low, ripped off of it, even pulled into it again on Tuesday, ripped off it again. And we kind of had to go down to the shorter term time frames because we didn't have any one day levels really. This is just kind of how we found our structures. So we had 550 as the max projection high. So obviously that's all time high or previous all time high. And then we also had 546.74 or rejection area right here, rejection right here, rejection right here, and a flush level right here. So you can see this held really good. This was a great dip buy, worked very well. And I showed you in the X-Trades app, we did buy the dip on Monday for a scalp. Given the fact this was holding and overall it was looking pretty good, we made a nice little 25% on that. And then you had another opportunity right here on Tuesday to buy again. Even trading over this 546, you could trade up to that, up to 550 once it broke out right here. So there's a couple ways to go about it. I personally prefer buying at support. So I'll just buy the structure lows, sell at the resistance. Some people like to trade the breakouts, trade up to the next resistance. Some people like to buy these 52 week high breakouts like this and make their own price target. I don't really like buying these. So when it breaks over into a new all time high, I really don't like buying into that too much because you never know when it's going to rug pull and you don't really have a price target to go off. Of. So it's better to buy the dips, find the discount areas, find the value areas and go off of that. This week, I don't have any levels for you, any new ones at least. I mean, we could zoom out here. You can see we are hitting that two. 200% Fibonacci extension. So that's a potential price target or resistance to go off of. And that's really it. I mean, we could probably draw a trend line too, like this, a little short term trend line like that. So maybe keep an eye on that. But overall, I mean, it broke right here and it really didn't respect it much. But overall, I really don't like longs here. I don't like buying into highs or anything like that. If anything, wait for a dip. I really would like to get back down to 550 again, all the way down here for a back test, buy the dip off that area. But until spy here creates a new short-term structure kind of like what we covered last week like these are short-term structures on the 15 minute if we can get something like that something very short term we can mark levels then but right now i don't have anything else we're at all-time highs we broke over the 550s i don't have any previously established resistance or support anything i just have a strong trend here on the 15 minute and nothing else so if you want to watch this 555 
as a potential res area given it's the 200 percent extension and given this 61.8 percent extension acted as support so good maybe we'll go ahead and respect the 200 percent as res or as resistance so just make sure you have the same fibs i have drawn it's very simple i can even get rid of all this crap for you draw it again start from this high go down to this low and there's your levels so we had old res right here at the 1.272 here is our 161 percent extension right here so we had our 127 our 161 and then our 200 right here and that's all we did and then obviously structures short term you know the 542s we had the 543 as well we had 550 and we have 546 and that's really it that's how we drew it out just watch that 555 just in case as short term resistance you never know how to react wait for a dip before trying to buy this i mean it's literally just melting up and going vertical we're definitely due for some type of quick flush you could try to buy that maybe but really our discount area right now is 550 until it starts making a shorter term structure you know way away from 550 this is probably the area you want to wait for that 550 or at least if you're looking for a value area that is kind of the value area right now because it's already previously established so 550 is value until further notice until we start making a new structure up here something like that that's all i can give you for right now all right not to qqq so last week we had our levels here as well so we had the 486 we had 483s we had 478s and 473s we actually broke below that 478 on monday just briefly at the open but we reclaimed it right here at this 1015 candle actually made a base off of it right here and we ripped off of that right there so that 478 to 483 would have been a good trade if you you know bought this holding area right here it held up pretty good consolidated for a while ran up into that it didn't really act as big resistance though even though in the past old structure low here old structure low here kind of a rejection area right here this week or last week it didn't really care too much about the 483 and it really didn't care too much about the 486 either which is actually the big resistance point so this little triple top area was a big res point rejection a rejection and a big rejection and once we broke over that you can see it's basically just a free for all everybody piles in to buy fomo kicks in and it was definitely a little bit more vertical than the spy and i feel like this because you know qqq has is basically tech dominant and tech has way more volatility it has a lot of chips semiconductors ai stuff like that so it's gonna have you know bigger percent moves a little bit more volatility and also for the vix and the spy the vix has been so damn low the spy really hasn't been moving that fast so these breakouts are pretty big but honestly spy we've seen bigger we've seen bigger blow off tops than what we saw last week and that's i feel like that's because the vix is stalling out so much it's not breaking that 1182 that we go over every single week and i feel like it's because volatility is so low that's why these little breakouts you know we're closing up you know half a percent here 0.6 here, 0.3 here. We haven't really had a big like 1% move, like a big 1.5% move on the SPY in quite a while. And that's likely due to volatility or the VIX. So basically QQQ is the same thing as SPY. Our value areas at the 486, all the way back here at the breakout point. So it's all the way down here. So until we get a new structure made, I don't really have anything for you special here. I can't really give you a good area to buy at. I mean, what am I gonna do? Zoom down to the five minute and mark this little structure low here and this one that just doesn't seem feasible other than for scalps and last week we had much more to work with we had a whole ten dollar range right here from this high down to this low we had this 478 to work with and on spy we had that 543 to buy the dip at so we had way more to work with last week now we're going to be waiting for some type of structure to get made a new kind of consolidation area up here maybe we can dip back down into 486 eventually but overall that's going to be a big retracement and honestly the seasonality is not really showing that so last week was really just a a 921 EMA combo test. Here's Monday. First thing Monday, we held up the 921 cloud, ripped off of it. You got three white soldiers. Same thing on spy. You got a 921 EMA combo test right here. Three white soldiers. New MACD cross. New MACD cross on QQQ as well. You do have a overbought RSI though. I mean, we got QQQ at about 77 last time it went all the way up to 83 before seeing these little three candles down and this pullback really wasn't that big it was really just a rebalance back down into the 921 combo i mean maybe we could have a one day divergence here so you got a high you got a higher high and then you got rsi you got a high but we don't have the rsi bending just yet showing it's going to reject and we don't have a rejection candle yet to prove that it's a, a divergence just yet so you got to be careful with that 
But that is a little speculation we could see in the future for a small pullback. But otherwise, I don't really have anything for you. Like I said, value is all the way back down at 486. Same thing with SPY. It's all the way back at 550. Right now, we got SPY and QQQ both just riding their 15 minute 921 combo very cleanly. Probably need to flush under that as well for a short term breakdown. So if you want, just use the 15 minute 9 and 21 EMA combo kind of as your trend gauge for right now. Since we don't have any one day support or one day res nearby other than these old levels at 486 and SPY 550. Use your 921 combo on the 15 minute for your trend gauge. And that's really all we can do right now because we don't have any nearby levels. Like I said, we don't want to go down to five minute and you know, mark 495. I mean, what's that, what's that going to give us? You know, one point wide from this to this, it's just not going to give us much. So you want to wait for something. And that's really all I got for you. I'm sorry. Last week was definitely cleaner. We had way more range. We had good support on SPY that we bought at. So I'm sorry, I can't give you too much right now, but maybe we'll see something set up next week. All right. And last but not least, we'll go over the VIX real quick. You can see it's the same thing as last week. We really haven't given up 1182 yet. Nothing has changed. We haven't flushed that new low yet. And that's probably why SPY is kind of slowly melting up like these aren't like big breakout moves by any means like i said it's like 0.4 here 0.5 here it's not like a big like parabolic fomo move just yet and i feel like that's because the vix is not breaking down so it's melting up slowly without a big vix candle breakdown we're not going to see that big fomo move in the spy it's probably just going to keep gradually melting up every time vix gets to 11.82 or the lower 12s that's going to be a hedge signal for people because every time we get here i mean the vix reverses over and over big wick off of it right here it reversed again right here it just does not want to give it up big wick right here and it's just not flushing below and i feel like that's because every time the vix gets here i feel like people start loading up on spx puts because the spx puts is what's going to move the vix up so obviously people are hedging because it's refusing to give up and maybe that's because hedging is so cheap i mean we have the vix hanging out at 12 to 14 for months now it's not going anywhere so without that big flush below the 1182 i think it's just going to keep kind of melting up slowly if it wants to keep going up on the spot and that also leaves us vulnerable for the vix to just start rocketing and reversing back up like it did right here like it did right here just for a quick you know pull back in the market you know volatility gets back to 1367 or gets back to 15 and then it just sells back off and that's when you buy the dip once it gets back up to here once it gets up to here every time it gets back up to here or here it sells back off and then you can buy the dip on the spy and it pays really quick because volatility sells off so aggressively once it gets to these levels back here right here but yeah i mean vix right now kind of still setting up maybe for a bounce we didn't see it last week here is monday just kind of sold off didn't really go anywhere it didn't really give us anything and then obviously the same thing as last week and all the other weeks the 1367 level that close if it gets a close over that that is your signal for a bigger move to the downside on spy and also for the vix to kind of go up more aggressively it kind of did it right here once it got over 1367 we had two days of a very aggressive move up and then obviously we had an event big 10 percent candle down right here and then you can see it tested 1367 on these two bars rejected uh, 1367 tested again rejected so your 1367 is the magic number as usual and as well as 15 we want to see it getting over 15 eventually as well if you want to see a pullback in the market of course for right now i don't really have anything for you on the vix it's not really signaling me anything other than it's holding so it's not going lower and it's not going higher either so yeah just be careful guys i mean the fact that it's not giving up really just shows that there's still people hedging. That's all. It doesn't mean that their hedges have to be right. It doesn't mean that, you know, the market's going to be bearish. It just means that the VIX is not giving up yet, which honestly makes me really skeptical to go long without the VIX breaking down and trying to go lower, making lower lows. It's hard to want to go long in the market. Like I said, I go long in the market when the VIX is a little bit more elevated and it's going to sell back off. You can buy when the VIX is red and going into, into decline too, but there's a great saying, when the VIX is high, it's time to buy. When the VIX is low, take it slow. And that's something I kind of live by. When the VIX is high, that's usually when I'm kind of looking for a potential entry in, for longs in the SPY. And then when it's kind of low and chopping down here, I do take things a little bit more slowly. I kind of just stick to scalps, quick stuff I can get in and out of. I don't really kind of go long swings or anything until you know the VIX gets a little bit higher. When the VIX gets a little bit higher, that means the market's probably pulling back and the market's at a little bit better of a discount. So it's as simple as that. Key level is 1182, 1237 as usual. Magic number at 1367. 
seven. We want to see VIX closing over that for volatility to go higher, for SPY to go lower. Same thing. You want to see volatility breaking down 1182 for a very aggressive move up in the SPY or S&P. Even the QQQ, if uh, VIX went under 1182, that would also influence tech, make it go even higher, probably very aggressively, given that volatility is making a new 52-week low, maybe even a new like three, four-year low. So that's for the VIX. Make sure you have these levels drawn out, like I said. You got 1182, 1237, 1367, 1540, 16, etc. These are all important volatility points or volatility extremes. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. I need to get this chopped up, edited, sent out, all that good stuff. So I love you and I'm out. There's a reason why Xtrades is currently the fastest growing application on the market for sharing financial ideas. With over $2.5 million paid in the last two years to contributors, users are flocking to see what trades the top traders on the leaderboard are sharing in real time. If you're looking to grow your reputation as a trader on the internet or discuss your trading ideas with other reputable investors, click the link below and get connected with the trading mentor today, completely free of charge.